tonight. Tropical disturbances in the Atlantic. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for October 4th. With the demise of Orlean, it appears that the tropics are finally quite quite settled down to code blue, and uh, we have tropical storm Payne, which has just formed in the eastern Pacific, but is likely to remain weak, and the remnants of Roki still active well to the east of Japan. Let's look into the Atlantic though, there are two areas of interest, both with at least moderate chances. The one on the right hand side near Cape Verde, an 80% chance, could become a rather short lived tropical storm. And the other one, uh, still an uncertain future as it progresses towards the Caribbean, could be potentially another significant storm threat. In the eastern Pacific, Orlean has completely died off very, very quickly that weakening phase. Tropical storm Payne is a sheared mess and an area of interest to the east has a 30% chance of developing. In the western pacific all we've got are the poor remnants of uh, Roki which are just a uh, partly naked swirl now elsewhere in the western pacific. Nothing to track right now, another quiet phase at the moment. And in the Indian Ocean we have marked a 70% area of interest in the southwest Indian Ocean. Could be a fourth storm in a row that has formed before the traditional start of uh, cyclone season down there in November. We also have marked a small area of interest in the Bay of Bengala, 10% as well. Satellite imagery right now looks like this and you can uh, take a look at a few different areas there. Uh, some storms brewing over the uh, Central American region but generally not much organization out of any of that stuff. Look far to the east there you can see those two areas of interest but particularly the eastern one near Africa. Eastern Pacific you can see pain there and even on the water vapor you can see that massive shear gap or the uh, shear gradient and uh, all lean there its uh, influence is being felt now in Texas and into the Gulf but I imagine it's going to be delivering very small rainfall amounts. And here's a closer view on what's going on in the Atlantic with those two areas of interest. The one on the left hand side isn't looking great to be honest um, and models aren't really sure what to make of that one. CMC does have it forming later on but most of the attention is on this larger and much more well established system there on the right hand side which was garnering a decent amount of convection and over at the eastern Pacific again you can see the view looking at Payne, the only tropical storm that's active at this point. Uh, so it went down from 100 to 0 very quickly with uh, the uh, dissipation of Hurricane Orlean. It made landfall uh, in the last 24 hours with winds of 75 miles per hour. And just 12 hours later, I think, it's down to nothing. And once again, you can see down there the bottom right hand side that Atlantic Invest near Cape Verde looking pretty good. And that could become, probably will become, our next storm uh, in the eastern Atlantic there, uh, which continues the activity. I hesitate to say active period in the Atlantic. I mean, I guess it is, but we're still not up at average yet. But I think a few more storms, well, a few more storms will push us above. Western Pacific looking very quiet here, um, you can't really see too much going on, there's a lot of little uh, thunderstorm type activity but really nothing organised, nothing getting a circulation, nothing that's uh, anything more than just general thunderstorms. And in the southern Indian Ocean you can see that area of interest getting some rotation. In the North Indian Ocean a real big blow up there that's been tagged in Vest 91B and that's what's been given a 10% chance but watch out that South Indian Ocean for potentially a new storm. Australian region and looking down towards the South Pacific things looking pretty quiet. Frontal systems once again dominating, uh, still a quite typical winter pattern uh, and thunderstorms brewing over the uh, island there, Papua New Guinea and the eastern part of Indonesia. 
Sea surface temperatures right now, well Orleans certainly made a good go of those 30 degrees Celsius waters and it thrived for a while when it was rapidly intensifying. Where pain is, it's actually a little bit cooler, around 27 or 28 degrees at, at the push. Looking towards the Atlantic though, still boiling warm waters there, even in the areas that Ian tracked through. Yes, it's a little cooler, but not a huge amount. Uh, most of those high seas areas uh, are very good in terms of sea surface temperatures, including a 30 degree patch in the lower latitudes of the central Atlantic. North Indian Ocean looking like this, a 30 degree patch off the coast of India and where that area of interest is in the south, still fairly warm around 28 degrees Celsius. Western Pacific is still boiling hot, 30 degrees plus and those 28 degrees Celsius waters extending almost all the way up to Japan. I think those uh, warm waters might be just starting to recede a little bit now but still 26 degrees right up to Japan and almost as far as Shanghai. So. Decent conditions all along there in the Westpac. And the anomalies show that it's uh, quite a bit above average in most of those areas that are interesting. And the La Nina effect still emboldening by the looks of things. Some very cold anomalies in the eastern part of the East Pacific, the equatorial zone. And in the tropical region, slightly below average there as well. I think the eastern Pacific is pretty much uh, running on scraps right now. The Atlantic though, look at the oceanic heat content, still extremely warm uh, values there in the Caribbean Sea, something to watch out for late season especially. Eastern Pacific only has a little bit left there, it never had very much in the first place. And the Western Pacific still looking quite decent for large parts of the Philippine Sea, although it is slightly decreasing by now. Let's check those computer models and here is a view looking at those two Atlantic systems. GFS only has a very short life, that potential western one, and on the right hand side here, moving to the centre of the screen, that new tropical storm that looks like it's going to form according to that GFS run, although it is quite a messy affair as we continue to watch it there, becoming a tropical storm briefly and then possibly a centre relocation by the looks of things there, and a rather broad one as well, um, and then or perhaps that's just getting sucked in and maybe that's the end of it, so we'll see how that progresses. GFS really hasn't picked up on pain at all so far with those uh, 40 mile an hour winds depicted by ASCAT, um, but that next system it still wants to potentially form, although even that would be also a very weak system, so um, big question marks about whether we see anything there, uh, but if we do, just like pain, it will probably be a weak and relatively short-lived storm. Uh, we still had some earlier models though suggesting that it could be a stronger storm into the coast of Mexico. And looking at the South Indian Ocean in that day 1 to 5 period, you can see there the development of a significant tropical storm, of course far away from any land areas which is good news, but once again a pretty identical place to the last few including Ashley, and this would be by our records I think, a fourth tropical storm, or at least a tropical cyclone in the South Indian Ocean before we've really started the season, all in very similar areas, it just feels like uh, deja vu over and over again and here's a look at precipitation for the western caribbean area now some of this will be associated with that tropical wave especially in the later part of this sequence you can see those colors bubbling up there towards the end on the october 8th 9th into the 10th there that's day seven and you can see over that seven day period we're generally looking along the east coast of uh, Nicaragua and Honduras, potentially six inches of rain, and down in Costa Rica and maybe even into Panama as well, maybe up to seven inches there. That's over 150 millimeters getting towards 200 over the course of that week. So uh, local people in that region watching us right now, something to watch out for as we take a look at that tropical wave that's gonna move through. Regardless of its intensity, looks like you're guaranteed those rain amounts. In the longer range then, day 5 through 10, let's take a look here, there's that tropical storm moving off northwards, not much left of it, and then that wave tries to become something here and it does round that corner and ends up in the western Caribbean region near Belize and makes landfall there, or possibly in Guatemala or Honduras, uh, so an interesting pattern there, almost like a Mitch track, uh, although a little bit further towards the uh, west, and of course nowhere near as strong as Mitch ever would be. Uh, and actually, I think at the end there, we saw it turn northwest into Belize at the last minute. So an interesting track there. 
Western Pacific on day 5 to 10, you can see this tropical storm forming and approaching the uh, Mariana Islands, probably passing north of those and actually turning northwards and becoming a significant typhoon during that period. Just check the South China, South China Sea as well. You can see possibly a small tropical storm that forms there in a brief existence. Where is it? There it might be. A weak, brief tropical storm into Vietnam. Well, that's the important stuff done with. Take a look at the Force 13 store, scan that barcode and it will take you through to all of our stuff, including uh, individual and full season storm animations on request and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt. And into the silly range then, this is uh, day 10 through to day 16. This is what the Atlantic is throwing up, a few strong extratropical cyclones, or at least that one there. Uh, but in the tropics, maybe something forming out of a mess there in the Western Atlantic. Uh, possibly, although maybe not, but quite a mess there across the whole Atlantic region. The remnants of that potential Western Caribbean storm, part of its energy ends up into an Eastern Pacific storm as well, which makes landfall in Mexico, which I think we'll get to see in a moment. But elsewhere in the Atlantic, pretty quiet over that period. Here is a close up on that storm that eventually gets sucked down into the Eastern Pacific. It's not the same storm, but uh, some of its energy and it makes landfall pretty quickly into Mexico there. I think that might be Guerrero and some of its remnant energy becomes uh, another tropical storm in the Eastern Pacific there. Uh, both of them rather weak. Uh, this Eastern Pacific storm there, that first one, that's probably mid-range tropical storm. And then when it emerges again, is it the same storm energy? It's hard to tell becomes a larger storm there as it moves out towards the west but of course that's extremely long range. What happens to that strong typhoon? Is it going to recurve successfully? Yes it will, a strong category 4 by the looks of it there and becomes an enormous extra tropical storm. Uh, might have been another one for Alaska at first but it ends up continuing eastwards and may even end up towards the Pacific Northwest, we'll see. Uh, but that once again is extremely a long way out and that may of course not happen at all. What else? For possibly forms behind it let's see I don't think there's anything much nope just a few little stormy areas that aren't tropical in nature well on this day on October 4th 1963 Hurricane Flora was making its strongest landfall at peak in southern Haiti as a category 4 there's an image of uh, some of Flora's impacts we're not sure where or when but Certainly something that's quite revealing there regarding its flooding and of course it's well known for that, particularly over Cuba. And Judy was a Category 3 at this point as well in the uh, Western Pacific, headed towards the Japanese islands. I can't remember whether it reached the islands or not, but I think it was recurving during this point. Well, back to today, that was an extraordinarily long amount of time ago. In the Atlantic hurricane season, next up is uh, Julia, or Julia, depending on which pronunciation we prefer. The Eastern Pacific now, next up is Roslyn. And in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, our next name now will be Sonka, followed by Nesat. And in the North Indian Ocean, next up is Sitrang. Uh, I still don't think we'll see that, definitely not from the current invest. In the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, the next name is Darien. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we might well see Belita next. And in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll hopefully be back with normal service tomorrow night. <laughs>